the term sharpshooter, your mind probably instantly goes to the modern day sniper, perched up high somewhere with a high powered rifle, all alone, and his scope can see every detail of the enemy. Well, if we backtrack to the American Civil War, a unit would be formed called the Burdan Sharpshooters, and they would consist of an elite group of men who would wear green jackets, their buttons would be rubber, and uh, they really laid the groundwork for generations to come for the modern day sniper. Well, we're here at the battlefield of Gettysburg, and we're going to visit a location where the second U.S. sharpshooters would be positioned, and they would be heavily engaged against Confederate forces on July 2nd of 1863. So, before we head to the slider farm and see the position of the second U.S. sharpshooters, I am where the Confederate right flank would have been, and this area was under the command of Evander Laws, and he was commanding a brigade of Alabamians. So they would sweep through this area, some going up Little Round Top, some advancing through the Bushman property into the Slider Farm and then into Devil's Den. And to the left of Evander Law's brigade, you would have Jerome B's Texas Brigade. And they were on a similar track. They would have advanced in this direction, headed towards the Slider Farm. So this would have been the Confederate position on July 2nd, 1863. So we're making our way to the Slider Farm here. And to give you some perspective as to where we are. We started way back here, a couple hundred yards in that direction, and we've made our way down this dirt road here, which leads to uh, Confederate Avenue, uh, pretty close to the intersection of Confederate Avenue and the Emmitsburg Road. But this is the area that the second U.S. sharpshooters would deploy uh, numerous units here. They would deploy companies E and H at the slider farm on a stone wall between the uh, residence and the barn. And you would have some main elements along this stone wall leading uh, in this direction here. And we have this giant boulder here. You always hear of uh, witness trees and witness homes and witness structures, but I don't see anyone moving this rock and displacing it here. So this is possibly a witness rock that kind of witnessed the fighting <laughs> in and around this area, or at least I'd like to think so. Now, this fence line probably has been restored since the battle, and I don't know if this is the exact location of the uh, stone fence that some of the second U.S. sharpshooters would take position behind, but this is definitely a pretty good example for you to see just how much cover one of these structures would provide, especially for a sharpshooter. Now, there were other sharpshooter regiments in the Army of the Potomac, but bird and sharpshooters were the first and second U.S. sharpshooters, and they were made famous by their green uniforms. Now, not all of them had green uniforms. Some of them had a piecemeal. Some of them would just have a green jacket and blue pants, or a green pants, blue jacket, especially as the war progressed. Uh, probably those green uniforms were hard to come by. But one of the coolest things about the uniforms is the buttons they had. They had rubber buttons that were made by Goodyear. So next time you buy a set of tires, just know that Goodyear helped outfit the bird and sharpshooters. And just so you're not getting lost here, Slider Farm, just straight ahead, you would have big round top panning to our left here. Then you would have Little Round Top, and there's a little creek uh, just before us here. You can't really see it through the brush, but that is Plum Run, and that runs in this direction. It also runs uh, by the Peach Orchard and uh, where the 1st Minnesota would make their charge. Now, when the Confederates would launch their assault here on July 2nd, they were under the impression that the Union lines were still where they were after July 1st. Now, when the Confederates would launch their assault, here on the Union position on day two, they had no idea that Sickles would move his corps and form a salient uh, near the Peach Orchard, Wheat Field, Devil's Den, uh, names that would forever uh, burn themselves into Civil War eternity. And uh, so when they saw his forces here, you can probably say it was an unwelcome surprise. And instead of continuing on with their battle plan of outflanking the Union forces, you can't have a large contingent of Union forces on your own flank. So a lot of the uh, Confederate regiments began to turn and head towards Devil's Den and Little Round Top and uh, that area there. So we're at the position of the second U.S. sharpshooters here at the Slider Farm. Now the first U.S. sharpshooters were also engaged here in Gettysburg and they were engaged at a place called the Pitzer Woods and that is over near the Peach Orchard, uh, probably in the same area where Barksdale would launch his attack from. And if you want to learn a little more about that, JD with the History Underground has a fantastic video about the engagement in the Pitzer Woods and uh, Barksdale's charge on the Peach Orchard. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the first U.S. sharpshooters, he's got a great video. So you head on over to his channel. But here we are at the Slider Farm. Now they'd be deployed near that stone wall that we walked by coming in here. 
and Company Z and H of the New Hampshire Regiment of these 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters, they'd be deployed on a stone wall that was angled, kind of like the one we see just before us here, between the barn, that large structure, and the two-story farmhouse that was here. So they would be deployed in this area here. And you can see the stone wall in the distance there. Now again, I'm not sure if that's the exact stone wall, if that's the exact area it was in, but again, it's in the general area where the 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters would form their line of battle. Now something that's also important to note, these sharpshooters here were essentially protecting Sickles' left flank. Since he moved his men out in a salient, his flanks were exposed. Now Burdan sharpshooters, most of them were equipped with breech-loading sharps rifles. Now these were only single shot rifles, but breech-loading rifles fire two to three times faster than your standard muzzle-loading rifle. And they were shorter, so they could crouch behind stone walls perch up their rifle and fire and reload from this position. If you were a standard infantryman and you had your standard muzzle loading rifle, you couldn't really load it from behind a tree or laying down or crouching. So you would have to reload it from a standing position, which for the sharpshooters behind this wall here, easy targets. Now as the Confederates came pouring through this field, they would start to be picked apart by Burdan's men who were greatly outnumbered. One account stated that they were outnumbered 60 to 1. So there were only about 150 sharpshooters deployed in this area. And coming through this wood line here was an entire brigade of Laws Alabamians. Now the fire from this position not only was harassing the Confederates on their right flank, but it was delaying them significantly because of the amount of fire pouring out of the stone walls here. And there's accounts that one of the regiments would break three times. So they advance to this area, take casualties, pull back, reform, advance to this area, take casualties, pull back, reform. They did that three times. So you can just imagine the amount of casualties that these sharpshooters were inflicting in this area before us here. Now, when the Confederates would get within 100 yards, the sharpshooters would begin to pull back. Now, when they were pulling back, that doesn't mean that they stopped firing. They were firing from boulder to boulder, tree to tree, fence line to fence line keeping up a steady stream of fire here against the Confederates. And at one point, the Confederates thought they were up against a far larger force than they truly were. Like we just stated, there's around 150 sharpshooters positioned in and around this area. Now, First Sergeant Wyman White of these sharpshooters here, he'd be positioned in this area between the house and the barn here. And he has an account that states, we did not have long to wait before a mass of rebels spilling over the ridge to our front across the Emmitsburg Pike. They came yelling and firing, struggling through fences and timber. Just in front of I, between the barn and the house of the slider farm, the land was open and they were mostly dressed in butternut colored clothes. The enemy force was at least 90 to our one. We are armed with breech loaders and many a brave southerners threw up their arms and fell, but on they came shouting and yelling. And here's another account from Edwin Aldred. We sharpshooters were behind a stone wall and we made quick work of the skirmishers. They brought up a regiment that had no chance. They had to come across a clearing of about 200 yards and we shot them to pieces. Their loss was terrible and they did not get halfway across before they broke and headed back towards the woods. And there was a Confederate officer that would state, we ran into a perfect hornet's nest of sharpshooters. And here we have the monument of Companies D&H of the 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters. And here's the slider farm here. And like we just touched on, the quote from the Confederate officer stating, we ran into a hornet's nest of sharpshooters. Well, there's your hornet's nest, part of the monument here. So they took great pride in what they did here at Gettysburg. But here's the monument to Company Z and H of the 2nd United States Sharpshooters. Now, I believe these two companies would have around 50 engaged here, and they would lose nine, and six were captured. So, obviously, they couldn't hold out. I believe there's almost 8,000 Confederate infantry coming through this area. So they would begin to pull back, and like we stated, they were conducting a fighting retreat or a delaying action, kind of like Buford's Cavalry on the first day. You'd pull back to a position, fire some rounds, pull back to another position, fire some rounds. Well, some elements would retreat up Big Round Top here, and the rest would head towards this direction, Devil's Den and Little Round Top, where they'd continue fighting. So before we wrap up here today, I wanted to share this story with you, associated with Plum Creek. So. Here's a section of it before us, and like we touched on, William Oates and the 15th Alabama would begin to pursue elements of the 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters up Big Round Top. Well, he would pass Plum Creek. Now, Plum Creek runs for a ways in this direction, and it runs for a ways in this direction here. Now, the spot that this story is said to have happened, I can't really get to because there's some renovations going on at Little Round Top and they have the road closed. But 
here is a section of Plum Creek and Oates and his men would pass over this creek once they were making their way up Big Round Top. Now Oates would detail about 20 Confederates. Now I've also read reports of almost 40 Confederates and he would have this detail fill the regiment's canteens. Well, that detail never made it back. They'd be captured by Union soldiers. And some of those soldiers that captured William Oates' men were second U.S. sharpshooters. Now William Oates also is uh, quoted as saying that if he had this group of men and fresh water, he could have taken Little Round Top, which is a pretty bold assumption, but who knows? Maybe he was right. And pan back towards the slider farm here. And through that clearing is a slider farm where elements of the second U.S. sharpshooters lured the Confederates into a, quote, perfect hornet's nest. 